Joining us is Richard Haydari, an author of The Rise of Duterte, and also more recently, The Indo-Pacific, Trump, China, and a New Struggle for Global Mastery. So very well placed to explain some things to us. Uh, tell us, Richard, uh, to what extent is domestic pressure uh, influencing Duterte's actions on this trip? Yeah, I mean, the president is very popular in terms of his overall approval ratings. But on the issue of foreign policy and his policy towards China, that's where we see a lot of problem. Uh, there's a pushback from his own top generals, including his defense secretary and national security advisor, who have openly raised concerns about potential espionage with the influx of Chinese illegal workers and citizens into the Philippines, but more importantly, intrusion of Chinese warship into Philippine waters. At the same time, the greater public wants him to raise the 2016 arbitral tribunal case against China. And in fact, not more than 90% of Filipinos want him to take back some of the land features that China wrested control of from the Philippines in recent years, particularly the Scarborough Shoal. So he's taking a lot of heat at home. And in that context, he's going back to China and trying to save this rapprochement, which is very controversial at home. Now, I want to talk about China's Belt and Road Initiative, its investment and infrastructure uh, scheme. Uh, to what extent does the Philippines benefit from the Belt and Road Initiative? I guess what I'm wondering is, is what is President Xi Jinping offering Duterte that's kind of making him open to giving up a little bit of Filipino sovereignty over the area of the South China Sea? Yeah. Right. Well, the fact of the matter is that uh, President Duterte has tried to justify his controversial, you know, obsequious policy towards China through two different justifications. One is that he's been arguing that if you're nice to China, they're going to invest big in the Philippines. And back in October 2016, China offered more than $20 billion, $24 billion of investments. Now, the problem is that three years into the Duterte administration, not much is moving on that front in terms of China's public infrastructure investment in the Philippines. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, there's zero Chinese infrastructure project, which has cleared the preliminary phases. And most of these projects, even in their initial phases in the bidding procedure, are facing controversies over potential debt trap or potential right. violation of the Philippine laws. So the Duterte's fallback option is to say, well, let's be nice to China, otherwise mm -hmm. we'll have war with them, which is also not getting a lot of traction at home. And right, that is right. why he's taking a lot of heat and suddenly saying, you know what, I'm going to raise the arbitration award and confront China. Mm -hmm. And so this South China Sea issue is a regional concern. Uh, put this in context. Uh, what are the neighboring countries watching out for when it comes to this Duterte and Xi meeting? Yeah, I mean, the fact of the matter is that the Philippines is occupying an important role because it's the country coordinator for ASEAN and China and currently overseeing the negotiations of a code of conduct that is supposed to govern the relationship of competing claimant states there in the South China Sea. And President mm -hmm. Duterte, in a lot of ways, also the most prominent leader in Southeast Asia today, quite a controversial one, but prominent one. So they're going to watch where the Philippines goes, because just a few years ago, the Philippines was the most aggressively anti-China country, which took China to international court. Now you have President Duterte singing to a completely different tune. So people are wondering where is the Philippines is going, and what is also the implication in terms of U.S. alliance in the region because the Philippines is a key U.S. ally. And if the Philippines holds on to its rapprochement under Duterte and pushes mm -hmm. back against U.S., then it would be also more difficult for the United States to project power in the region and put the Chinese, uh, you know, uh, keep the Chinese at bay. So that's where the Philippines is in. Richard Hedarian, thank you. My pleasure.